Why did Jesus have to die? The death of Jesus Christ is central to what Christians believe. We celebrate his death at Easter, at Good Friday, and his resurrection on Easter Sunday. But whilst his suffering was horrific on the cross, the things which Christians remember is what he achieved. He was the only person who could represent both humans and God because he was both. He was the almighty God, but also he really walked this earth. He really was a baby. He really had skin on. And so when he died on the cross, he was able to be our substitute. He was able to take our place. He'd never done anything wrong. We have, we do wrong things. We have wrong thoughts. We have wrong motivations. He was without sin. So what did he achieve on the cross? Well, naturally, we are guilty before God because of the wrong things that we have done. But by trusting in him, even though he was not guilty, we can be in him. We can be part of his family. And God looks at us now as not guilty. It's the great exchange where his uh, goodness, his righteousness is transferred onto us so that we are free. We are innocent. Because of our guilt, because God is just as well as loving, we are under his wrath. The wrong things that we've done and said need to be punished. That's only fair, isn't it? And yet, by Jesus taking the wrath of God, we can become now children of God. Jesus cried out, Father, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why have you left me? This is the first time in the history of the universe where God was separated um, The father and son were separated. And my friends, we may feel far from God, but we have never experienced that. If we reject God and we go to hell, then we will experience what it is to be separated, to be forsaken by God because his love is taken away. But by Jesus taking our wrath, the wrath that we deserve, we can be God's children. We can be loved and be part of his family. The third thing is that by nature we are slaves. We are slaves to sin. Do you ever find yourself doing things that you, you later regret? Or even before you think, I'm never going to do that. And then you end up doing it. That's because we are wired to be selfish. We are wired to do things that we really don't want to do. Yes, we, we can do some good things as well. But when Jesus died on the cross, he releases us from this slavery. There's a picture of the Israelites, God's people, in the Old Testament. They were slaves in Egypt. They were oppressed. And yet God released them from that slavery. And now we are not bound by any sin anymore. God enables us to break the power of uh, of doing wrong things. Yes, Christians still fail, but they don't have to. They're unable to live new lives. The slate has been wiped clean, we've been forgiven, we're not under God's wrath anymore and we are free to live a new life. It's starting a new chapter. And then lastly, we still suffer on earth, don't we? And some people think, oh God, he's so remote, he's so far from us, he doesn't really understand what it's like to suffer. But my friends, was, Jesus was rejected by his family, by his friends, and was killed in the most brutal way. So when we suffer, he can sympathize with us. He has suffered in every way. But not only that, not only, he can, not only can he help us in our suffering, but he can give us hope. Because the gospel, the good news of Jesus, says that one day, If we trust in him, there will be no more suffering. There will be no more pain. And he has enabled us to be in that place. So trust him, my friends. Why did Jesus have to die? Because he was the only person who could be our substitute. He was the only person who could rescue us.